Right, I am going to give you a quick run through of what's currently available, um, a somewhat confused landscape, and I will give you my view on, on, on the way things sit currently, and then we'll move on to what's, what's available in addition and also coming down the pipeline at us. So as you'll see, we've got a, a plethora of, of different standards. Uh, some are standards, some aren't. Some aren't even standards out there. Some are international, some are national only. So there's a good deal of confusion. I'm not going to dwell on this slide very long, but it, it's, this, this is a, probably a simple representation of the many standards that are actually out there. So let's start with ASHRAE, American Society of Heating, Refrigerating and Air Conditioning Engineers. So um, to those of you in the US, this may, this, this may not be something that you, you, you think about. Um, however, to those of us working internationally, we often ask the question, why is a US standard important? Um, why is it, you know, it's not a global standard, it is a US only standard. Um, so why is it important? Well, it provides the environmental metrics that the IT manufacturers, the equipment manufacturers have actually agreed to and, and will warrant that their equipment works within. It also makes sure that um, by, by adhering to those environmental envelopes, which are actually published by, by ASHRAE, um, that, that the equipment is not damaged in any way um, by excessive temperature, humidity, or, or, or other factors. So it, it's very important in a data center context because we obviously, we are hosting IT equipment. So we need to make sure that we are providing the appropriate environment for that equipment, that it continues to run properly, that it doesn't get too hot, switch itself off, get damaged or, or, or um, uh, be damaged by other factors, not just the environmental envelope. So ASHRAE is, is, is important in that context, and that's why it's used in the design and operation of data centers globally. But it is only a US standard. It is not a global standard. Um, but it is a standard because it's referenced by ANSI, the American National Standards Institute. Last revised in 2015, uh, well, the, the, the TC 9.9 um, environmental envelope for data, data processing environments is, is, is what we typically refer to. And again, that was revised in late 2015. Uptime Institute, as I said earlier, Uptime Institute has been enormously, uh, the Uptime tiers have been enormously successful. Um, they have become a very, very common reference point. They might be considered a de facto standard in some respects, but they are not actually a true standard, despite the fact that Uptime refer to the, the tier topology standard. Um, it is not a standard in, 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 in the US, it's not a standard anywhere else, so it's not recognized by ANSI, for instance. Um, but it's been an incredibly powerful and incredibly useful set of, of, of tools by which we have uh, and continue to benchmark data centers. Um, there is a certification program associated with, with the uptime tiers. Um, it is only run by uptime though, so it's not something that can be generally applied by anybody. Uh, you've basically got to go to, one, uh, to uptime, so it's a single source for the certification program. Um, it's, again, has immense value and has probably formed the basis of, of uh, our entire industry in terms of standards and benchmarking, but it is not a true standard. So we need to be a little bit careful when we re reference it as being a standard. We've also got TIA 942B is the current version. Um, immensely popular again, a lot of people know about it. Um, it it's, it's been defined as a, a, essentially it is a telecommunications standard, telecommunications and cabling standard, which has historically um, also included data center elements. Um, originally it had an appendix based on an agreement with the Uptime Institute, uh, referencing the, the Uptime Institute tiers. Um, which did lead to a certain amount of confusion between what uptime were recommending and what TIA were recommending because they were not necessarily the same things. So there was a degree of confusion there. Um, the appendix has now been removed following a, a, a ruling in the US. So um, uptime have required the term tier be removed to, from TIA 942 documents and there's now reference to levels um, rather than tiers. Uh, the reason for that, I think, was was down to competition around uh, certifications, etc. So, it, again, we're in a confused landscape. We're actually also in a somewhat competitive landscape when it comes to data center standards. So, um, just be aware that that these things do not necessarily work in sync, and there is a high degree of competition. Um, I'm sure many of you have already seen that. So TIA 942 is, is actually primarily a cabling and telecom standard, not strictly speaking a data center standard, but it is used as a data center standard and a reference point. Um, it is US uh, only, it's not an international standard. It's, um, it's only a US standard, although it is a standard because it is um, backed by ANSI. 
So again, the American National Standards Institute. However, one of the challenges is that it has, it, and still is, has been and still is somewhat US centric and somewhat prescriptive. And that particularly applies to the cabling and the telecoms elements. So not all of the elements within 942 can necessarily be applied across the globe um, because of some of the somewhat more prescriptive elements to that. Uh, so it, it cannot be fully adopted anywhere outside the US. And, and, and that's true in most cases, not all cases by any means, but can be true in most cases. So if you're receiving a certification against 942, then there's probably an element of non-compliance because it's not possible due to local regulation. Um, there are certifications being conducted or being, which, which have been endorsed by TIA. Uh, however, this does remain a little obscure. I believe there's only one um, company that's actually able to do this at the moment um, due to their relationship with TIA. Um, quite where that's going is open to, uh, to some debate. Uh, the most recent update is revision B, again, 942B, published in July 2017. I'm going to give you a quick rundown. There's always been, or historically, there's been a fair bit of confusion between the uptime tiers and, and TIA 942. Um, so firstly, neither 942 or uptime represent international standards. TIA, as I've said, does have the backing of ANSI, but ANSI also support BICSI. So BICSI 002 is also a, a, an ANSI standard. So we have a little bit of confusion about what is you know, the US standard for data centers. Both, both, both claim that territory, but neither necessarily has it to their own. Um, Uptime does have an official certification scheme, although it is only administered by Uptime. Um, TIA does endorse a scheme which may lack a certain amount of independence. Um, that remains a little obscure, as I said. Um, TIA is no longer permitted to use the term tier in their literature. So if you see references to TIA tiers, um, people have it uh, not quite right, basically. Um, TIA does mandate some level of utility power requirements. Uptime doesn't. So uptime will only reference your generator, your standby generator capability, not the utility elements. Um, it is perfectly possible to have a tier four, an uptime tier four certified data center without any utility power whatsoever. Um, and a lot of people are confused by that. Um, it is purely measuring generators. Um, TIA is, is really a telecommunications standard and very heavily influenced by telecoms and cabling requirements. TIA, as I've said, is somewhat prescriptive and that it may not be able to be applied internationally. Uh, TIA does reference ASHRAE, which is useful. Um, uptime does not. Uh, and just be a little bit careful about the website TIA942.org. Um, that's actually not administered by TIA. It's actually administered by somebody else. Again, I mentioned Bixi very briefly in passing. Uh, Bixi002, uh, it, it, it is, um, again, a standard that does apply to data centers or is applied to data centers. Uh, it's first published about 20 years, sorry, about 10 years ago, um, but it's not been particularly widely adopted, particularly internationally. Um, it's, it's, it's not commonly applied. I, I don't come across it particularly often, but um, I think, again, for those, for those companies and people that have more of a focus on the cabling and telecom side, they're, they're more aware of it. You know, the people who've got the, the Bixi RCDD, for instance, probably see this more often and come across it more often. Um, but it's, it's not particularly common in terms of a, a, a reference data center standard. Uh, Bixi also have a, uh, a, a, an operational standard, Bixi 009. Both 009 and 002 were, were updated last year. Um, so there is a very recent update in place. Um, but the question, I guess, again, as, as I've already said, is because ANSI supports both 942, TA 942 and Bixi 002, um, you know, we are left to decide for ourselves which is the most appropriate for our particular um, environment or our particular business need. And um, it, there's an argument that, that there is, well, again, there is confusion over that, you know, which should we be using, which is the, which is the, the correct standard. Um, and the jury remains out somewhat on that, I'm afraid. Uh, as I've already said, there is competition between TA942 and Uptime uh, for, for the data center space, the data center span, the standards arena. Music